Today I will be talking with Dr. Julian Chick, who's the Chief Operating Officer for Admetus. Julian, welcome to the Morgans Network. Good morning, Scott. How are you? I was wondering if we could start off by just describing the Admetus story. There's a couple of elements to the business. Yep. So Admetus is a healthcare company that is developing two uh, technologies for the care of patients across two platforms. Uh, one is in regenerative tissue uh, space and these are medical devices used in surgical applications and we'll obviously we'll talk more about those. And the other is around immunotherapies based on some technology developed by Professor Ian Fraser right here in, in Brisbane. Great. So if we talk about the regenerative medicine part of the business first, um, perhaps describe some of the products, the markets that you're working in? Sure. So the, the technology itself is really developing, taking raw tissue and developing a bioscaffold product for surgical applications. We have our lead product on the market, CardioCell. It's approved now in Europe, the US, and some countries in Asia and Canada. And it's being used here in Australia under special access. And the difference around the, the technology is that it produces a bioscaffold that doesn't see the calcification that's typical of other tissue in, that is implanted into, into patients. Uh, it is easy to use, it's off the shelf, but it also facilitates an autologous regeneration. So we are developing a portfolio of products as we uh, briefly mentioned, and the lead product is CardioCell. This year, 2016, we're looking forward to uh, launching a vascular product range, but we're also looking at applications in dura mater, so repair around the spinal cord and, 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 and uh, brain injuries, uh, as well as looking at it as a delivery platform for cellular therapy such as stem cells. Okay, and uh, whereabouts in the world are you selling the product? Yeah, so our lead product, CardioCell, uh, is, as I mentioned, is on the on the market in the United States and Europe, of which we have our own sales team there. Uh, although we are looking at expanding that through distributors as well to work in concert with our teams. Uh, we are in the markets in Hong Kong, Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, we're on the market in, in Canada and, and we've seen our first sales come through in the Middle East where we have, an act we have a partnership with a local company called GenFarm. So we are looking at a global launch, rolling that out over time. Okay. Um, the other part of the business you mentioned was immunotherapies. So that's uh, some work that Ian Fraser has been working on for a while. Yes. Um, and you released some interim results. Do you want to talk us through those? Yeah, so the, so the program, the technology itself is really looking at therapeutic vaccines. So, so we call them therapeutic vaccines, but really we're looking at technology that stimulates the immune response uh, to, to tackle a disease or a viral infection. Um, and the application is in viral infections or oncology or cancer treatments. We have two programs uh, or therapeutic areas of focus. One is in HSV2 and one is in uh, human papillomavirus or HPV. So our HSV2 program is in a phase two study. We recently provided an update on that study um, and we've looked at some, a, a subgroup of pa uh, patients from that study, the first 20 that went into there, albeit that we looked at blinded data. So there's nothing conclusive as it were per se, but what we've been in very encouraged by what we've seen as far as the data pool to date. So um, the key for that study really is going to be the third quarter of this calendar year when we start to look at some of the unblinded data uh, from that study, looking at whether it is um, providing some immunotherapy uh, aspect to the disease. Okay, well that'll be very interesting in the third quarter. Um, perhaps if we could just have a chat about the financial results that you've achieved to date. So the sort of sales growth you're getting in your um, cardio cell sure. division um, um, and your cash position and perhaps some of the, the options you're looking at in terms of your cost base. Certainly. So we had uh, a half yearly, uh, we reported revenues of 6.6 .6 million and I'll break those down for you. Uh, uh, we had net income of around 8.8, .8, so we did get some R&D tax rebates. So some of that pipeline development, we're getting the R&D tax benefits here in Australia. Uh, we had a net loss of 13 million for the for the for the first half, and a closing cash balance of 19.1. Although there were a couple of one-off items in that 13 million, uh, associated with a post-market study we're doing in aortic valve reconstruction study in the in Europe and the US, uh, as well as some preparation for some HPV programs that we're looking at, some clinical programs around our HPV therapeutic vaccine. Uh, as far as uh, CardioCell is concerned, uh, we saw sales for the first half of 2.3 million. 
uh, which was uh, a strong uh, response re report for us, I think, because if you look at the full year, the previous year we did sales at 2.6. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that we are seeing the growth that we want to see. We're seeing quarter on quarter growth. It's double digit growth to date. Uh, so what we've really been doing across those zones is building up the number of centres. And so going forward now, I think the sales team is very much focused on trying to build use per centre to up that revenue going forward. Uh, as far as costs are concerned, we're very cognitive of our expenditure. So moving forward, we also looking internally across the company just on ways that we can save uh, costs as far as whether that's um, you know subtle changes to the restructures of the, or the structures of uh, the sales team, um, as well as looking at uh, uh, just the overall management of the of the company and allocation of, of capital expenditure R and D and so on and so forth. We also mentioned, uh, we also announced earlier this year a relationship with Coroneo uh, and what we're doing there is we're going to sell their aortic ring, annuloplasty ring, in, in Germany and the UK, so they're two of the biggest markets in Europe. Uh, and the idea there is to add additional products to the sales team's kit bag, as it were, mm. to increase sales and revenue for the company uh, going forward. Uh, and so that will cost us nothing to add to that as far as infrastructure, but it adds to our re overall revenue of the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, that's probably a good point to talk about the outlook for the next 12 months. What should investors focus on? Yeah, so we've got a number of exciting uh, aspects to the company going forward. Uh, one is um, obviously the third quarter looking at that unblinded data for HSV2, so that's really going to be the meaningful data uh, around that program. We have a couple of clinical programs coming forward with our human papilloma virus therapeutic vaccine, and so that will kick off around mid-year. Uh, so that's very key. One is in cervical cancer and one is in another oncology target. Uh, and just working through that. Uh, the launch of our vascular cell, uh, vascular product range uh, is a key uh, and that will help again expand our uh, products in the regenerative medicine space. Uh, what I'd add to that is that in particularly in the US and the Asian markets that's already approved. So um, it's no regulatory process required necessarily to get that on market. It's already there. So um, again, that adds to the to the to the gross top line, I guess, of, of revenue sales and to the bottom line. Uh, and then, in addition to that, you know, we're looking at you know launching our Coroneo, the Coroneo product, uh, next month, uh, and we continue to look around for additional products. In addition to that, as we've talked previously, the company has uh, an infusion business here in Australia. That's having a very that's had a very strong first half of the year and will continue to do so. So we're on track to do sort of 13 million plus in revenue this year, uh, which is another strong year. It's up from the 10 million that we did the previous year. So continued strong growth for the company, um, con continued uh, portfolio development, um, products going onto the market, etc. So plenty of news flow coming through for Admitters over the next 12 months. So I've been talking with Dr. Julian Chick, who's the Chief Operating Officer for Admitters.